age shall not grow old as we that are left grow old age shall not weary them nor the years condemn the second world war began when England declared war on Germany on the 3rd of September 1939. Some time later Japan came into the fray and it was then when I turned 18 decided to enlist in the Royal Australian Air Force. I was accepted and after several months of training I qualified as a sergeant air gunner. With a group of air gunners, we were posted to England in Bomber Command. We were advised to form our own crews, which came as a bit of a shock. <clears throat> in the group, I found two Australian pilots looking for a rear gunner. And I, of course, was looking for a pilot. So, after some conversation, they decided to toss a penny for which crew I would uh, accept. That was okay by me. A friend of mine joined the other crew as a rear gunner, and about six months later, they were totally lost on a, a bombing mission over Germany. We had completed our course and had a posting to a, um, a bomber squadron uh, flying Lancasters. <clears throat> but unfortunately, we didn't make it. On our last training flight night, because most of our flights were not at night anyway, and we had been seven hours in the air and we didn't make it back to base, we crashed. That crashed killed five of my crewmen and two of us survived. And I emphasise here, if it wasn't for the other chaps saving me, I would not have been here talking to you now. It was pretty badly knocked about and I experienced eight months in hospital and rehabilitation. <clears throat> Nurses and physiotherapists did a wonderful job. They patched me up well and I managed to qualify to go flying again. The war was still on and I was only 20 and I thought, I'm over here for a reason. So I volunteered to fly again. And eventually they accepted me. And uh, I was able to crew up with a new crew. This time only two of us were Australians, the skipper and myself. And uh, we, and with her crew, we were fortunate enough to complete 10 operational flights over enemy territory before the war finished in May 1945. In October, we had a, our posting to return home on the troop ship Andes. We were marching down to the wharf that day to board the ship and our crowd on the side of the streets were uh, clapping and cheering us uh, as we were marching down singing Waltz on Matilda. And to my surprise, a young lady came out of that group and she came over and grabbed me by the arm and she said, thank you Aussie, thank you Australian for your help. With that she gave me a peck on the cheek. We were still marching and she walked alongside of me give me a peck on the cheek, put a token in my left hand, which I still have at home, and uh, uh, ducked off in, back into the crowd. 
I got several remarks from my mates, but I won't say that here. <laughs> we arrived in Melbourne. We had four hours leave in Melbourne. And the first thing I did, you no need to record this, I don't know. The first thing I did was go to a greengrocer's shop and buy a hand of bananas. I never saw a banana for three years. <laughs> I love bananas. <laughs> So <clears throat> it was a train and troop ship home to Brisbane and back home to Bundaberg on the 31st of January 1946. I was discharged from the Royal Australian Air Force back as a civilian. That's about it. <laughs>